the Shir is Uzeicha Nishmas Harav Yechiel Michel Ben Harav Eliezer Lippa. So since today is Asara Betevis, we'll discuss the Minyani Tainis. So the Gemara tells us in Rosh Hashanah and Dafyud Ches, the Gemara discusses on which months of the year they send out messengers. Why are we interested? Today we have a calendar, it's set up. We don't need messengers to take a look at the moon. But back in the day when we didn't have calendars, they used to send out messengers to tell us when is when is when to celebrate the Yom Tovim because it's Makadesh Yisrael Vazmanim. We brought the holidays. Makadesh HaShabbos, that's Kviya Vakaime. Shabbos comes with or without us. By Yantav, it's Klai Yisrael that create the Kedusha. So the, so the Mishnah lists different months of the year. We have to send out calend- messengers, obviously the month before, so to know when to celebrate the Yom Tovim. So the Gemara asks, one seems to be missing. They don't send out messengers to know when Tevis is. So the Gemara wants to know, we know we have Asara B'Tevis. We have a fast day during the month of Tevis. So how are we supposed to know when to fast? So not only that, but it also says some Yudzai and Thomas as well. I believe the Gemara says, Gemara says that we don't know, why don't they send out messengers for Thomas? It says they send out for Tishabav. But how come these two are left out? That's the Gemara's question. The Gemara quotes in the Pasuk in Zechariah. The Pasuk tells us in Zechariah, Som HaRavi, the Som HaChamishi, the Som of the fourth, the fourth month that is, that's Yud Zayin Tamaz, Som HaChamishi, the fast of the fifth month, that's Tishabav, Som HaShavi, the fast of the seventh month, so Siri, the fast of the tenth month, Yelam Lam was Sasan with Simcha. It's a day of Sasan with Simcha. So the so Zachariah quotes the four fast days, and the Gemara asks the obvious apparent contradiction. The Gemara says, I gotta get it, these are happy days or sad days. Because it says regarding the four fast days, it says Som, it says fast, which implies Usually fast is a sad time, and I, usually they're happy. Or be on Yom Kippur, we are happy, or it's a happy day, whether we're happy or not, it's a separate issue. But Yom Kippur is the happiest day of the year. But usually a fast day is a, is, isn't a happy day. And the Pesach ends off, Sassam with Simcha. It's a joyous occasion. So which one is it? So the Gemara says it depends. There are three periods in Jewish history. So when is it a Som? When is it a fast day, a sad day? When we have no Beis HaMikdash and religious persecution. We're, you know, we don't, it's, we live in a time of suffering. So that's when it's a Som, it's a Chiyav to fast. When is it a Chiyav to Simcha? When we have the Beis HaMikdash up. When we have the Beis HaMikdash, it's happy times. However, no Beis, again, it's going to different Mepharshim. It means when you have no Beis HaMikdash, been no religious persecution either. One could argue that's the time we're in now, in North America anyway. So if there's no base on mixtures that we know we definitely don't have, and we don't live in a time of religious, doesn't mean there aren't any anti-Semites around. There always will be halacha v'yaduah shavayisav soni yashako, but there's no open persecution. So then the Gemara says, it's not an obligation to fast, it's not an obligation for simcha. The language of the Gemara is Ratsu Misanin, Ratsu Eino Misanin. If you want to fast, you can fast. If you don't want to fast, you don't have to. It's optional. <coughs> so that's the Gemara, three levels. By the time of no Beis HaMikdash, a Chiyav Son. So let's say, or, or no, and religion, let's say, so perhaps during the Holocaust time, not that long ago, that was a Chiyav of Son. Then you have, when we had the, when we had the Bayesheni, so perhaps then we had a chiyah, maybe if that's a discussion today, what did they do on Tisha B'av? Was t- the other fast days for sure was Simcha. There's a discussion regarding Tisha B'av, whether, because Tisha B'av perhaps could be a universal day of Avelos, not just for the Beis HaMikdash. So one could argue even Bizman by Yusheni maybe was still a, a fast day or a sad day. That's up for discussion. 
But Bizman Azeh, the Gemara says, Ratsu Mitzan and Ratsu Ainu Mitzan. So we did a Gemara, it's optional. Where else do we find a similar halacha like we do by a fast day? So that, that is another dispute, the Gemara in Brachas, in the fourth parak regarding Tfilas Aravis, regarding evening service. There's a discussion in the Gemara about whether one has to dive in Meir or not. Shacharis and Mincha, we have a chova. We know one is obligated to dive in Shacharis and Mincha. What about Aravis? So that's a Machokas in the Gemara. I believe Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Yeshua. One opinion is a chova. It's an obligation, just like Shacharis and Mincha. And the other opinion is no, it's a Rishus. And in fact, it's a Machokas in the Gemara. We paskin that, that Aravis is a Rishus. We follow the opinion that Aravis is, so what does Rishus mean? So already Tosis in the beginning of the fourth parak of Brachas raises the question, what do you mean Tzilas Aravis Rishus? The Gemara tells us in the beginning of the fourth parak, let's say one did not daven Mayrav. So the Gemara says, you have a Chiyav to daven Shacharis twice. So how could you tell me that I have to make a Mayra if I don't have to dive a Mayra in the first place what kind of how can you tell me have to make it up so Tosis has his own he redefines what Rishus means Rishus doesn't mean optional it means lower level obligation it's not on the same level of Shachar as in Aravis but in two 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 different Tosis one in Brachas and one elsewhere whether uh, whether a mitzvah overus, even a mitzvah enum overus, but they have something else to do, so then sometimes you'd be exempt from myrav. But lechinam ain lo You can't just say, well, I don't feel like davening myrav tonight. That's out. So we don't. So Tosa says arvitz doesn't mean rishus. It means all level obligation. Jeff. Does Tosa put in the same level as minhag? Because you, you have to do a minhag if it's a strong one, I suppose. Right, that's so not, not another issue. He doesn't compare a minute. Right, that, no, that gets really into the token of a minute. That's something else. If you do a minute, it, there is a discussion because not this that this toast is I'm quoting as employee, but there is a discussion. Is what does it mean? So when we say we pass in tefillas arvis is rishus, but we know the famous bahag. The, I so it's rishus. So how come I don't how come I don't have a choice anymore? Because krashovu la kachova. Kai Yisrael in our good senses have accepted Meir as an obligation. So that's the question. A machokas in the Rishonim, what do you mean Kfar Shavu Lachova? Is it that Kai Yisrael accepted it and it's nothing to do with me? Well, no, every individual, to the effort in theory, according to the second opinion, if, if it's too late for you, but when the, when the day you became Bar Mitzvah and every day, every night you said, Bli Neder, I'm not taking on Meir's as a, so then you could, it's a discussion. Perhaps you wouldn't, you wouldn't have to dive a Meir. But we, don't, we assume, as Christ you know, accepted upon ourselves, we're in Golas, Meir represents Golas, the field of Yaakov Avinu, and therefore what well, we say we're voluntold today. So it's a discussion whether you're forced to volunteer. Is that the Pshat? Or that Meir, in other words, is today, is, is Meir have the same status as Shacharis and Mincha? Do we say, it changed in the Chefsa that today the Karshal Chova is now it's an obligation or no it's still volunteer but I'm forced to volunteer your yes. boss told you you have to do this you have to volunteer mm -hmm. so it's a major nafkamin it seems to be a machokas Rambam and Ravid because Allah is when you're davening Mincha and you realize you're already davening Mincha and you realize in the middle of your second Mincha so the luck is you have to stop you can't continue because you're already you can't, ah, uh, what about Tzvilas Nadava? You can't mix a free will prayer with a mandatory. So that's the shallow regarding Mayrev. Amachok is Rambam Ravid. If you remember that you daven Mayrev and you started davening a second time, so it's a shallow because you, you got to finish. What's in the Kudus Amachok is? How do we view Mayrev? If Mayrev is a Chova now, then I can't mix a Chova with a Nadava. But if, I only, if I'm only voluntold, really, Mayrev is still a Rishus except I have to do it, so then perhaps I could continue davening my That seems to be the same. The simile here by the fast, even though today's fast is optional, we didn't have Gemara, but we don't have that option anymore. That Klai Yisrael and the good senses have accepted the four fast days. Tisha B'Av was never an option. Tisha B'Av always, we didn't have a choice. 
It's a separate, when in Gemara it says Shadi, t- so Shadi Tisha B'Av, so that's, so that's the question. It's, it's, so it's optional, that's what the Gemara says. So the Gemara asks, now you understand, that's why they didn't have to send out messengers for Asara B'Tavis and Yud Zayin Tavis. So the Gemara's question is, if I, how do I know when to fast? If I don't know when the tenth of Tavis is or the seventeenth of Tavis of Thomas is, how do I? So the Gemara answers: We didn't send out messengers because it's only an optional fast. We only send out messengers when we ha- when we have to. That's why the Gemara says Shadi Tishabav. So why is Tishabav sent out? Shahuchpul Otsara. Since it was double trouble, the Beis Hamikdash was destroyed on that day, among other things. So therefore, Tishabav we sent out Shuchim. But on Asar B'Tavis, on Yud Zayin Tamiz, we don't. So even though Medina Gemara, it's optional, but we don't have that We don't have that option today. We have to fast. I'm sorry, even Tisha B'Av is optional? No, Tisha B'Av isn't optional. Shani Tisha B'Av, Shuk Pulot Saras, Tisha B'Av was never optional. That's why they sent oh, out oh, messengers. Oh, oh, oh. So we always fasted optional. on Tisha B'Av. Okay, okay. That's a question. What does it mean, Shani Tisha B'Av? Did it, did it retain all the fast days where we did Rei Kabbalah? It's a passage we started off in Zechariah. So the question is, when the Gemara says Shadi Tishabav, Shahuk below Tzoros, what's the Pshad in the Gemara? It's a saying it retains its Divrei Kabbalah status, and even today we fast being Divrei Kabbalah. Well, no, even today Tishabav is only Midrabana, but because by other fast days we say you don't, it's only Ratsu Mitzanim, but by Tishabav, because of all the tragedies that happen, we say Midrabana, you have to. So that's a, that's a big Shaila, and turns out in terms of how strict we are on Tisha B'av. Because in certain ways, Tisha B'av is comparable to Yom Kippur in the sense that we begin the night before, we have the all five Inuyim, but there's a discussion in the post what about the concept of Shi'urim? Is there a concept of Tish On Yom Kippur, when a person's sick, a Cholosh Ayeshbo Sakana, perhaps, or a Cholosh Ayeshbo Sakana, depending on how you learn it, but there's a concept of Shi'urim, that Hakal Kal Tchila, that assuming if you have to eat on Yom Kippur, so they say you should eat, you know, a certain amount of food in a certain amount of period, or you should, in order, you should, in order that you should, that you should have a a kadei achilat process, etc. So that's a shail in the post game whether it applies to Tish above, but that's dependent on this issue whether it's been different kabbalah or not. So getting back to the Gemara, clearly states it was it's optional the fast of Asar B'Tavis. However, it's not optional for us. We've taken it upon ourselves. So is, it, is there any different the fact that we've taken it upon ourselves an optional fast versus a regular fast, which is a Chiyav? So that, so, so, so we see already there's room to be Meiko already because Meiko did not Gemara, not Meiko that you, for no reason you don't fast, but someone who's a, who's a I wouldn't even say a Chol Bil Sakana, someone perhaps, you know, someone who is a, is someone who normally wouldn't have to, you know, if you're really sick, then you don't have to fast, period, and you shouldn't be fasting. But someone who, let's say for a Yom Kippur, or perhaps a Tisha B'av, you're a Cholish Eimbo Sakana, but by the other fast days, perhaps you, 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 you wouldn't even have to fast because it's only Mikra Dina Gemara. And that ties into the most important question now, since the fast began, is when is the fast end? You see, different times on different calendars, when when the fast is over. Somehow, whatever Shabbos is over, that's when Asar B'tavis is over, and others have a much earlier time. What is that based on? So, so there's a Gemara in Sachem. The Gemara talks about Ben Hashemashos of Tisha B'av. The Gemara says, it's a Machogos in the Gemara, actually, but uh, one opinion says that Ben Hashemashos Tisha B'av, you can't eat Ben Hashemashos Tisha B'av. So what's the implication of that Gemara? But Ben Hashemash is of the other fast days. We'll just focus on Asar B'Tavis because that's what it is today. The Mashba Ben Hashemash of Asar B'Tavis, I don't have to worry. That means according to Mashba, this Gemara, the fast is over at sunset. Sunset is about, I don't know, 4.45 or whatever time it might be exactly. So that's, however, there's another Gemara in Tainus. The Gemara says, Kol Tayish El Shokal Achama Ain lo tainis. That Gemara says to be considered a din tainis, you, you need a fast that is shakal of chama. So what does shakal of chama mean? So that's the same machlokas you have by Hanukkah. You have by is a is a Gemara says in Shabbos when do you start lighting Hanukkah candles? 
Mishatishka Chama at Shatichla Rego Min Hashuk. So what does it mean, Mishatishka Chama? So most, so we assume, or most assume that it means that at nightfall we do, we wait until nightfall and then we light Hanukkah candles. However, the Rambam Shita, the Vilna Gon, that and it's not a cool, it's a chumrah because that means you have to have long, you have to have long candles or a lot of oil. Because they say no, the, the mitzvah Mishatishka Chama begins at Shkia. That's when you should be lighting your Hanukkah candles and has to go until Ashatichel has to go to the same amount of time. You just have to start earlier. So, so, so it's a question over here when the Gemara says. So according to the Rush, it means when the Gemara says in Tainus that it goes called Tainus Shul Shagi. It goes until nightfall. However, the the Piskei Tosa says it's no kasha. Piskei Tosa at the end of Tainus writes called Tainus Shul Shaku Achama means Shkia Sachama. Therefore, it's no steer. It fits in well with the Gemara Mesach. And the Gemara Mesach says you have to be machmir by Tisha B'av ben Hashmashas. But I mashah from the other fast days at the end at Shkia. So that's exactly the Piskei Tosis goes to our liking. He says, you're right, the fast day ends at Shkia. So according to the Piskei Tosis and others, not just him, the fast ends at sunset today. So number one, we have Midina Gemara, you don't have to fast at all. It's an optional fast. And even if you want to be machmer, you could be machmer until sunset. You're already taking on two chumras already that you're fasting, and you're going uh, and you're going and you're going until sunset. However, how does um, how do the other opinions learn the Gemara? Beno Peret says no. Shakol Chama means states. So how do you reconcile the Gemara and Sachem with the Gemara and Tainis? That if the Gemara and Sachem is mashma only Tishbav, you have to be strict on. But according to the Rush, then no, it means that all fast days. So, so what, why is Tisha B'Av different? So Rabbi No Peretz answers because by Tisha B'Av you have two Ben Hashemashas. What do you mean you have two? By Asar B'Tevitz I don't have two? No, I don't. Because Asar B'Tevitz begins in the morning. It's only, it's over tonight. So, so, but Tisha B'Av begins the night before. So Rabbi No Peretz says, no, everybody agrees the Ben Hashemashas after Tisha B'Av or after the fast days, you have to wait until Seitz. So that's not on the table. That's what Beno Peretz is. But he's talking about the Ben Hashemash is before Tisha B'av. You have to stop eating the sunset of Erev Tisha B'av. Why would we make a chiluk between the Ben Hashemash before Tisha B'av versus the Ben Hashemash after? So Rav Shlomo Kuger does explain because we have the concept of Chazaka. We have the concept of, fa- of following the chazaka, the status quo. There's something called the cheskes iser, that something has the status. We go with the we go with the status quo. So he says, if you're fasting a whole day tisha b'av, now it comes to ben hashmashas. So it's a suffix. So I have to go. It's a suffix iser. So I have to go with the status. It's been usher up until now. I, until I can prove to the until I break the chazaka, it's usher for me to eat. So <coughs> therefore, you have to be machmir. Yeah. By Ben Hashmash's Tisha B'av. But the Ben Hashmash is before Tisha B'av, I'm in a Cheskes Heter. So it only becomes Asr until night. So that's why there's room to be Mako, according to um, Shmuel, that by, by, by the Ben Hashmash is before Tisha B'av. That also ties into the Shiloh of whether Tisha B'av today is Midivri Kabbalah or Midra Banan. Whether if it's Midivri Kabbalah, so then maybe there is no room if you assume so. So, number one, so number one we have the Gemara that we have the Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, Ratzu Metzanim, Ratzu Eno Metzanim. So, Midina Gemara, it's, it's, it's an optional fast day. But of course, in our good senses, we've taken upon ourselves Klai Yisrael as fasting. So we all fast today, assuming you're healthy enough. And then we have the issue, okay, so when's the fast over then? So that you have a machokis between the Piskei Tosis and the Rush, whether the fast is over at sunset, well, the fast is over at nightfall. So that's two machokzim. And there are, by the way, the Arach HaShulchan writes, don't be mocha. Anyone who eats after Shkia, don't, don't make a protest. So that yeh shal mi litzmoch. There's nothing if some, he's not saying if you're feeling fine, there's no reason you should. But certainly someone who's not feeling well and they probably should be fasting anyway, but they are, then don't wait. The moment after Shkia, you should be eating because you probably shouldn't have been fasting anyway. So he says, don't be mocha someone who eats after Shkia. 
And then the question, so let's say we want to be machmer like we all want to be, and we want to wait until Seitzach HaChavim, like the rush. So the question is, when is Seitzach HaChavim? That's a shayla all year round. It's not just a question for today. It's a question any day of the year. So then you have various opinions. When is Seitzach HaChavim? Do you know there's Rabbi Tom's opinion that 72 minutes after, again, there's not just, we'll take the simple approach from Rabbeinu Tam, 72 minutes after sunset, but you have the Vilna Gon Shita, the Vilna Gon, which is not, it's not just the Vilna Gon, it's not just uh, Rabbeinu, it's Rov Rishonim with Rabbeinu Tam, and it's not the Vilna Gon, it's really the Gaonim, so really he came first, the Gaonim came before, the, so the Grush Shita is, at least in Eretz Yisrael, 13 and a half minutes after Shkia, 13 and a half minutes, based on how you reconcile Gemara Sachim and Gemara and Shabbos, whether it's four meals, three quarters of a meal. So, according to the Vilna Gon, 13 and a half minutes after sunset is Seitz HaChochavim in Eretz Yisrael. So that's the question, what about in North America? How do you, how do you take the Vilna Gon Shita? So again, so there are different calendars, and the, the person in the Biblical Institute, he comes here, he feels they have a calendar telling you exactly when the Gras Seitz is. So, so all year, when it comes to Shabbos, when it comes to Yom Kippur, we're dealing with Darises. We're not going to rely on the Gras Seitz to do Malacha after Shabbos, to eat on after Yom Kippur. However, on Dinim Durabanan, like Ramosha writes, by when is the time to light near Hanukkah, he says, okay, we'll, we'll be Machmir for Seitz, but we don't have to wait for the 72 minutes. You'll, you'll take the 20, 20, you'll take the Gras Seitz. So therefore, so that's what they point out here. So number one, it's an optional fast day. But of course, we've taken him on ourselves to fast. And then the question is, when is it over? According to many, it's over at Shkia. But we're going to be machmer again. We're not going to eat after Shkia. We want to be machmer and wait to say Tzachel Chavim. We don't have to wait for Rabbi Tom Seitz. We could take the Vilna Gon Seitz. And that's why, so that, so on the calendar, I think the Gros Seitz, based on what the calendar says, I'm guessing it's about 512 because that's what it says the fast is over. So that's relying on the opinion of the Gra, that the Gra states it's at 512. So, Yeh Shabbi you always, if a person wants to be Machmer, you could wait so as many as you want. But I'm asking you when is the earliest time to eat, that's when you could eat.